Hey, are you okay? Hey, um, yeah, um, I, uh, on, take a breath. What's up? So I got tickets to this event really last minute, and I'm actually asexual, so I don't even know if I should be here. How so? Well, you've got to be into sex to be here, don't you? These events are about socializing and experiences. It doesn't have to be about sex. Oh, really? Of course, you can experience so many things here without going all the way. Oh, so if I wanted to try out some sensory stuff in the dungeon, I could? Sex is a luxury, not a necessity. And there are so many other luxuries out there to enjoy that have nothing to do with sex. Oh, um, though, can I, um, I'll introduce you to the dungeon mistress. This way. Yay. for changing my baby's name despite promising my dead husband's family i named the child after him i lost my husband due to covid when i was about three months pregnant after he died my mother-in-law thought it would be a great idea to name the baby after him if he was a boy i agree because i was overwhelmed with emotion she said it would be like he's still there in a way when my son got here even though i still wanted to honor him i'm not so sure i wanted to name the baby after my husband I feel like that's just sticking to the past and that my baby should be his own person, so I give him a different name on his birth certificate. When I made the announcement on Facebook that baby Lucas had arrived, I started getting confused comments from my mother-in-law. She called me a few hours later asking why I'd broken the promise. Am I the asshole for changing my baby's name despite promising my dead husband's family I'd name the child after him? My mother-in-law asked me why I broke the promise. I told her my reasoning and that I just wanted to move on in a healthy way. That I felt like calling my husband's name when referring to my son would hurt me and make the process harder. She didn't yell at me, but she did say how disrespectful it was to my husband to not include him in my son's life in some way. She also brought up the fact that I didn't tell her or his extended family that I was changing my mind. I told her personally that I felt like I didn't need to as she was just my mother-in-law, not my husband. She raised her voice and said she'd been waiting all this time to meet her grandson and now she doesn't even want to see him. I said that was fine and hung up. I do feel bad. Story time about how I caught my roommate with my fiance three days ago. This Clarence is not my story time. I was up to be on Instagram. My fiance and I have been together for three years. He took me on a trip last January and proposed. He's been nothing but an amazing fiance. Families get along super well. My family loves him and he's so kind and gracious to them. On the other hand, my roommate is terrible. He claims to be a model on Instagram, but... That's not really what she does. She's actually got a couple of sweet puppies, if you know what I mean. In the past, I've helped her out so much with money because she's always broke. I even loaned her two grand just last month to repair her car. My family hates her and they think she's super toxic. I have a soft spot for her because we know each other since high school and I know that she struggled a lot then. I'm a very kind and giving person, but she's totally taken advantage of that. Funnily enough, my fiance hated my roommate when he first met her. He thought the same thing my family did. She constantly monopolized my time. And if I was out on a date with my fiance, if she needed something, she would call me and ask me to go to the supermarket and pick up apples and stuff like that. About two months ago, I had to put my foot down. I'm in the process of planning my wedding with one of my best friends and my roommate is totally stressing me out. He continues to criticize every single thing that I pick. I asked her to be one of my bridesmaids, huge mistake, and she made a fuss about the dress. She wanted a backless dress, but I didn't want that for my bridesmaids at all. I'm not trying to plan an Instagram wedding here. She was so upset about the bridesmaid dress that she actually didn't speak to me for about a week. I had to beg for her to talk to me. Eventually, she told me that she didn't feel sexy in the dress and that she really wanted something she could shine in. My best friend was with us when she told me that, so my best friend quickly corrected her and told me that the only person that needed to be shining that day was me, because I'm the bridesmaid. My roommate got super upset and told me that she didn't want my best friend coming over to our apartment anymore. Obviously, that was going to be a huge no because she was helping me plan the wedding. So instead, I had to get my fiancé to come to the apartment and help me out. My fiancé works a lot and he's constantly on his phone. He also travels for work a lot, so I knew that he wasn't going to be able to help me all the time.
time. One day I come home from work and find my fiance and my roommate sitting on the couch chatting. I actually got really happy because I thought maybe they're trying to be friends now. I wanted them to get along. My fiance and I knew that we were going to move in together right after the wedding, so I didn't have a problem with them becoming friends. Fast forward to four days ago. My fiance had his bachelor party and I had my bachelorette party. I had so much fun at my party. My roommate was on her best behavior, but she actually told me that she needed to leave early, which I thought was super strange. I get home from my party at around 3 a.m. I was wondering about my fiance, so I decided to call him. The phone goes directly to voicemail. A few minutes later, I get a message from one of his friends. It's a picture of my fiance and my roommate on the couch kissing. Then I get a phone call from the guy that sent me the picture. He told me he thought I needed to know what was going on. He told me that my roommate showed up to my fiance's back bachelor party and that she was flirting with him the whole night. He also told me that she was pressuring my fiance to drink. My fiance has never been a big drinker so it surprised me that he was even drinking at all. He sent me some more pictures of my fiance and my roommate. They were dancing and chatting the whole night. So I decided to show up to the bachelor party unannounced. When I walk in, there they are on the couch. My fiance was pretty inebriated and he was kind of confused too. My roommate on the other hand was totally fine. She jumped up from the couch and asked me what I was doing there. I asked her, what are you doing here? She actually laughed and told me that my fiance invited her. Part two is up. That's when I find my fiance and my roommate sitting on the couch together really snug. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Unfortunately, I did not find them kissing or anything. I asked my roommate what she was doing there. She laughed and told me that my fiance invited her. My fiance was totally out of it since he had been drinking. That's when I pull up my phone and show them the picture of them kissing. They both start to deny it, but I'm like, how can you deny it? I have proof. My roommate told me that she needed to leave and she literally ran away. I actually had to wait for my fiance to sober up for a few hours before he could actually talk. That's when he told me he didn't remember anything. My roommate is refusing to speak to me and told me that she doesn't want to be in the wedding anymore. And I'm like, yeah, of course you're not. The only thing she said was that my fiance came on to her. My family hates him and her now. My parents don't want me to get married, but the wedding is a week away. My fiance swears that she did something to him. He's begging me for forgiveness and I don't know what to do. Please help. I'm 22 and my sister Anna 21 is special needs. She has severe autism and while she is verbal, most of her communication is physical like sign language due to her social discomfort. She does speak around family though and has pretty bad cognitive skills. She can't comprehend boundaries and lives with our parents so they can best watch her. I'm getting married in three months. We planned a simple wedding and reception at my fiance Michael's parents' barn and farm. Since it's all going to be DIY and we aren't planning on anything too expensive, we can do things pretty quickly since flowers, food, and decor will be provided by his family. I sent out invites last week and I asked Anna not to come. I told my parents I understood that would mean they might not show up, but it was just a heads up. Why no Anna? Because she has an issue touching Michael and trying to kiss him. At times when we were at my parents' house, Anna would try to grab Michael's hands, try to lean in to kiss him, or would have really bad shutdowns if she wasn't allowed to be directly next to him. We've tried speaking to her, but there's only so much we can do when she really doesn't understand. I told my parents I just want one day for Michael to be my partner and not Anna's comfort person. They called me selfish and asked how I expected them to agree to something like this. They told me Anna is disabled and may never experience a wedding of her own while I have Michael for probably the rest of our lives. She'll have no one and that Michael and I can be a little bit more understanding to the reality of her life. Later on, my parents called me letting me know that they won't be coming and it's best that I don't bring Michael around anymore since I've chosen some man over my sister. They told me that Anna wanting to kiss Michael and hug him is normal for a woman her age and she doesn't understand what her feelings mean. I suggested they try to redirect her during the wedding, but they said that Michael is going to be family to her and he needs to get over it. I suggested they watch the wedding via web and they said that it's not fair and they deserve to see things in person. I asked if I could pay for someone with proper credentials to watch her that day while they attend and they asked me what I would do when they died and if I'd pawn her off every time. I dropped the unfortunate truth bomb that I don't want to put any more of my life aside for Anna. I did it up until I turned 18 and Anna is not my life's responsibility and I won't be her keeper. I assured them that I pay for her care, but if she's okay doing this to Michael, then I worry if I ever choose to have children and what she'd do to them. They said I was sick for suggesting she'd do anything to my future children and hung up on me. They sent me a lengthy text telling me not to contact them until I could do the right thing. Am I the asshole for not wanting my disabled sister at my wedding?